surrender to Central Australia and the first trip was to the Flinders Ranges uh, and I try whenever I go to a big new subject matter to at least hire a plane or a helicopter and fly over it. I did that with Tasmania. I did a, a large scale show on Tasmania some years ago and that was pretty well received. So was this one of the Flinders. This is actually a compilation uh, in, in photographing above the broad, beautiful landscape. When I got my subjects back, I really wanted this drama, but there wasn't quite enough meat on the subject. So I've become a digital camera expert over the years. So I managed to insert this ridge into this, hence giving it the definition I wanted. So if you ever fly over the Flinders and expect to see that, <laughs> it reminds me of a, a fellow I worked with, he was the retiring public trustee and they asked me if I'd do a painting as a farewell gift for him. And I knew he loved the area around Blackbottom Bay, where I had painted it. But after a certain time, uh, some subjects permit that you can paint from memory and still legitimately title the work Blackbottom Bay. I felt really bad, though, when I heard that he'd driven around every weekend for about three months. <laughs> trying to find the subject, which had been made up in here. I did tell him, um, and I suppose with anyone who's painted experienced this, you'll do a painting from memory. I know a woman bought one painting of Kirribilli because I'd painted her flat, which I'd never seen. <laughs> so, <laughs> so these sort of things are part of the job, I suppose. But I've often said to students, the greatest thing a painter really has is a thing called artistic license and yet underpinning us is a bit of a fear of using it and I'm just as uh, vulnerable to that fear as anyone else. Um, if you look at Brett Whiteley and the license he took even with Sydney Harbour, which we still accept as Sydney Harbour, but uh, sometimes you, if you, you're going to put a telegraph pole in the wrong spot, you feel guilty uh, because someone will say that's not there. Uh, so artistic license has to be fully considered and truly exploited because as Lloyd Rees once said, the, the job of the painter is not imitation. It's exploration, heart, mind, and soul experimentation in order to paint the ordinary in an extraordinary fashion. And I love that philosophy. And, and I have tried to adhere to it, but if you take your eye off the ball for even a few seconds, you're back to guilt. I mean, it could be Catholic guilt for all I know. <laughs> so the one on the right here is from the Tasmanian series and uh, Port, 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 uh, you know, the infamous uh, Port, Port Arthur, sorry, um, which has a real beauty. It's a shame that that's been tainted a bit but not to the point where you'd overlook a subject like that. And uh, there was a little bit of license taken in that, not a lot, because it presented itself as a fairly literal translation. When I say that, uh, I incorporated the stormy sky because I felt as if the energy that was within the water movement wanted company in the sky. So I suppose there was that bit of license. This one here of the Hawkesbury, 
is an indication of the obligation we also have as painters to communicate with the subject. When uh, I'd, I'd been on the Hawkesbury a few times in a houseboat and sketched and painted, and when I photographed this one, it did have a nice, soft sense to it. So what did I decide to do? Not communicate with that, I decided to turn it into a bushfire aftermath. And I started it in, in dark browns, blacks, ochres, kept working it and working it and it wasn't happening. So eventually it, and a painting will dictate the terms of its own completion if you correspond and communicate with it. So from rejecting the morning mistiness, it came full circle from a bushfire to recovery to back to the morning. And, and that gives you a bit more respect for the process. Uh, there are liberties you can take. And maybe on another day or two I would have gotten away with it, but I don't think so. I think it was always trying to be that. This one over here in the middle is called The Devil's Marbles at Millthorpe, not Central Australia. And a, a gigantic set nestled in uh, probably only an acre or two. Uh, Jay actually came up there with me once and we took a few photos because the hardest thing, and even there, uh, yeah, they look bouldery, but I got Jay to stand under one and pretend she was lifting it to give an indication of the scale of the boulders. And, and I thought that was uh, interesting in a landscape where you, uh, and it wouldn't have been proper to include a figure, but almost without a figure, you can't truly render the scale of them, uh, unless you come right up on them and then, you know, well, it's like coming up on Ezra. Rock. So uh, the aerial uh, seascape here was born of a trip John Corbin and I, some years ago, um, after, I, I'd actually gone up in the blimp, Bondi's airship in 87, when he was just letting it out for a bit of commerciality. And uh, that was, this wasn't born of that, but in the wake of that, my mate John Corbin, the painter, uh, we decided we were going to do a helicopter, a light plane, and an air balloon trip. So we did the copter, and I think that came from that. And we had a bit of a cowboy taking us in the copter, so uh, you were so busy holding on that the photos weren't all that good. Uh, the, air, the light airplane was a bit better. But then, at the time John and I were planning this, one of those weird occasions when air balloons started to fall out of the sky and that wasn't going to stop us when one fell. Then when the second one fell, uh, there was a little bit of contemplation. Uh, but after the third one, and these, this was all in a month, so I'm still not sure what that headland is, but it was born of one of those trips and I do I do love uh, the aerial aspect. Uh, one, of, one of the things that resulted from the 87 trip in Bondi's airship was a show I put on at the Hilton celebrating the bicentenary of Sydney. So that, and it was such a great platform, um, higher than the tallest building but not as high as an aircraft. 
and it simply kept circling the harbour. Um, and, and I still reflect on that exhibition as a real privilege to have painted Sydney in all these big abstract chunks from above. And uh, I've still got some of them, um, but it, it was also in the days of what we can say was a very successful red dot exhibition. <laughs> but I've got some dots in my pocket that I'll place on these on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> this, this little one is just a little pain. Um, so do we, do we want to keep strolling through? With, 